All this on X or Twitter. You can join the conversation on our YouTube channel or you can join on our app. And now if you would like to subscribe or you can register a school for the school drives for the first hour of the show, you can do so on our website. And I look forward to interacting with each and every one of you this afternoon. So please do fire away with the questions. <clears throat> so we've been, we left the, the camp probably about 10, 15 minutes ago and we've decided to come down towards this waterhole. That's not too far up ahead of us and we've taken one quite long straight road towards the dam and there's been a lot of elephant tracks heading down towards the water. I'll just go again with the name. Sorry, I heard that they want to see elephants. Mimi. Mimi, I'm also really hoping for some elephants this afternoon. And we will... We will soon find out. Maybe there are some elephants waiting at the waterhole. There was also a leopard that we saw not too far from this waterhole. So maybe she's even come down for a drink this afternoon. Holding thumbs that there might be some elephants at the water. We'll just have to wait and see a little bit longer. can start seeing the water in front of us now. And I don't see... Alison P, the kids' drives are incredible. It's a great way to start the show and to interact with all the, the kids, and they do ask some fabulous questions. So we have got to the waterhole now, and it doesn't seem like these elephants are here. I think the elephants might have already maybe drunk and moved off. Sometimes when they do come down towards the water, They'll drink for a little bit and then move off. It is still quite hot this afternoon still. And the elephants might have drunk and cooled themselves off and then headed into a little bit more of a thicker area. There we can see a, a heron on the, the other side of the bank. It looks like a gray heron. It is quite cloudy here on Juma today. The wind is picking up just a little bit. Why don't we have a look at the weather through all the other locations? So a high of 35 degrees this afternoon. It is quite nice though that there is a, a nice breeze that's blowing and I believe there is a cyclone that's on its way towards this area. So maybe it's going to bring some rain and maybe that's why the wind is starting to pick up. I'm having a look at this uh, grey heron here. and This grey heron is sitting on the edge of the water hole waiting to see if there's any fish that might be moving around. Oh, that grey heron did just move off. You can hear it calling. Maybe it's going to go back and land again. There we go. So that grey heron was waiting for any fish. Mm. 
Zaya, that's a very good question and there's only one small little water hole that we we do fill with water if there is no rain around and it's much much smaller than this but this water hole now that I'm sitting at currently we don't fill up so if there's no rain and there's no water in it it will then just stay completely dry but the, there's quite a lot of water still um, in this water hole so I don't think it's gonna dry up we are still expecting a little bit more rain in the the rainy season which is now so I can only hold thumbs that we are going to get some more rain and it's going to fill this water hole up just a little bit. The wind has really started to pick up here on Juman. Sometimes or a lot of the time the animals actually don't like the wind. I mean if we talk about a rhino Rhinos, they've got extremely bad eyesight. They've got very small eyes for being such a big animal. And so they use their hearing and their sense of smell a lot. And often if it's very windy, they spend time in much thicker areas to try and get out of the wind so that they're able to smell and listen out for anything that might be of danger to them. even elephants I mean elephants ears are massive and you can imagine the wind blowing directly into that ear it must be quite loud for them they also spend a lot of time within the the thicker areas so this afternoon to find those elephants we might have to drive some of the thicker dry river beds maybe or drainage lines and see if we can maybe find some elephants for everybody watching Better is more than a word to us. It's a commitment to conserve our nation's precious landscapes, oceans, and wildlife. It's more sustainable fishing and farming practices, jobs and prosperity for our communities, and access to clean drinking water for all. Better is believing that together we can make a difference. For nature and for you.
that hippo is literally coming up and going down and I mean because it is quite hot the that hippo is resting along the bottom of the water and he'll be sleeping on the bottom and while he, oh there he is no there he's gone and he comes up and takes a breath and then goes back down to the bottom and they'll be sleeping now during the daytime and as it does start to get a little bit darker once that sun sets then this hippopotamus will come out the water and graze it will feed on grass and move around throughout the night and as soon as it starts to get a little bit lighter it will then move on back to the water you have to be very lucky to see hippos out of water because they often are quite nervous i mean this is their safe place they feel very comfortable in the water whereas out of the water they're not too comfortable so they sometimes if they do see them they start to run away from you into a thick area to get away from you So it is quite nice to just be sitting at this waterhole, just relaxing, enjoying the sounds, enjoying the birds. But it would be spectacular if we were able to find something coming down to the water. But I don't think those elephants are going to be too far away from this waterhole. So I might just spend a little bit of time driving around this area and seeing if we can find that herd of elephants and we might just spend some time with it but from here I might just start heading towards the next waterhole not too far away and I'll go see maybe what's happening around that waterhole there it does look like there are some clouds coming in from the the east from where we are and that's apparently the direction of where the cyclone is coming from or the weather is coming from okay so i think we are going to leave this waterhole here not too much happening but for now let's send you over to eric who's ready to say hello Good afternoon, good afternoon everybody. Welcome, welcome back to another sunset safari. We are here live at Amakala Private Game Reserve where we are overlooking this beautiful, beautiful outcrop that is South Africa. Hello, hello everybody. My name is Eric, joined by Morgan behind the camera. And this afternoon we're going to be your eyes and ears on a very, very windy, windy afternoon. As usual, I think our plan for this afternoon is uh, we had an amazing drive, an amazing safari this morning with those elephants and those meerkats. So I think what we're going to do is go back to where those elephants were. Um, there is a slight possibility that they could be coming out of that valley, uh, but we didn't actually necessarily see them go into the valley. So we don't know if they were, maybe were feeding around the outskirts, along the top, along that little ridge line of the valley, because not all of them were there. Remember, we only had those two bulls, uh, well, that one bull, and then uh, those females that were feeding in and amongst the the bushes with the little youngsters they weren't in the valley they weren't even at the top of the hill yet so yeah, i'll be very interested to go up there and see what has happened over the course of this small well, this morning and early afternoon Mabel, the trees that you are looking at is uh, a Circea, a sweet thorn, a hairy star apple, and most likely a common guari. All 
four of those trees are evergreen trees. However, there are trees that are not evergreen trees, and those would be um, uh, sneezewood. And sneezewood, you will be able to see when we get to another kind of viewpoint overlooking some very thick thicket, you'll see, so, uh, hopefully, we'll be able to find some sneezewoods in amongst that thicket that have already started to turn red. Other than that, majority of what shrubs grow in this part of the country, in the Eastern Cape, are all evergreen, so they don't lose their leaves. They stay green all year round, 365. And that's good for our animals because majority of these trees do provide a fair amount of food for our animals here especially the giraffe and the elephants. They love these trees, especially the sweet thorns, the ones with the very, very long thorns. Now, not a lot going on in this area. And this is the area where two days ago the lions were and uh, they have now moved across to the far what side of the reserve it was a sort of southeastern corner and he, yes yes timon is exactly he is a meerkat so we have meerkats here and the warthogs so pumba and timon we have plenty of pumbas, almost too many. There's maybe an overpopulation of pumbas, but we also have a couple of colonies of Timon. And I was actually going back in uh, some of some of my pictures, and I'd seen a, an update from somebody who'd seen another uh, meerkat den. So that would take our total of three, sorry, yeah, three meerkat dens to now four meerkat dens on Amakala, which is absolutely amazing because I think it was about five years ago there were no meerkats here at all if I'm not mistaken sure this wind <laughs> is non-stop every single afternoon without doubt it is here Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
success. Welcome back to Juma. We, we followed the elephant tracks from the waterhole that we were just at and we saw some signs in the road of their tracks. We then saw some branches that were lying down on the road and boom, there we have it. Uh, herd, the herd of elephants that we just missed at that waterhole. So they haven't moved too far away from the water where we just were. <laughs> How incredible is that noise? So that there was a big male elephant that pushed the young baby. <laughs> Mimi, it's uh, my pleasure in finding you some elephants this afternoon. I'm guessing they're most likely your favorite animal if you're so excited to see these elephants. And I think myself and Panda are also excited to see these elephants. We said this morning after we spent quite some time with a leopard that we wanted to find elephants and were unsuccessful, but they were just waiting for us for this afternoon for this amazing kids drive. I'm gonna just try and reposition, see if we can maybe get a different view of these elephants. So just bear with me for one minute. Maybe we can get a nice little gap up ahead. Ah. How's that for a view now? Amazing just to be with this herd of elephants here. I mean, that female in picture is incredibly big. Dear elephants, so young elephants or baby elephants, they unable to drink with their trunk or their nose. So what they do is they will literally put their whole trunk and their mouth into the water and then they will sip the water. But as they get older, they're then able to use that trunk of theirs very, very well. They learn to use it over time and then they, are, they do drink with their, their trunk and then they spray the water into their mouth. So they use both, but they, they don't sip it in through their, um, through their trunk. They sip it up and then spray it into their mouths. This elephant's now decided to feed literally on the bush that's right in front of us. And we, we still are very safe from this elephant. We didn't park this close to it, it came towards us, so there's nothing to worry about. Very, very relaxed. And it's actually eating the, the grass that's growing in and amongst the, the trees. So it's eating the grass that no other animals are able to get to. And using that trunk to its best ability. Zaya, so elephants, the male and the female. So males are much, much bigger compared to the females. The, the females have very thin tusks quite long thin tusks where the elephants have very thick tusks and then also the the elephant males their head is very very rounded the front parts of their head is very rounded where a female like this one in front of us her head's very very straight and so those are the the three main differences between males and females and often you won't find females that spend time by themselves Often you'll find um, males by themselves. 
So if you see a group together, it's most likely mostly females and their youngsters or calves. Whereas if you see one elephant by itself, it's uh, most likely a male, but don't just assume that. If you do see them, then you must take time to look at the, the tusks, look at the head, look at the size, and then make your decision based off of that. So elephants almost disappearing right in front of our eyes. Who thought such a big animal like an elephant could just disappear right in front of us? Quite spectacular. Maybe I'm going to try to loop around a little bit more, see if we can maybe get another view of these elephants. I'll give this elephant a little bit of time just to move a little distance away. It seems like she wants to feed some more. So. I'm not going to start the vehicle now, she, she isn't too far away from us and I'd hate to disturb her, I mean she's very relaxed feeding in front of us. Oh, getting all the dirt that she's flicking off the grass that she's eating in my eyes. And I mean such a big animal, you think that they would just eat the, the dirt, it's no problem. But watch as she, Panda's doing some legendary work there on the camera. As she picks up the grass, what she does is she'll actually flick the grass to get rid of all the dirt. Alia, elephants are very, very big. And I'm guessing you're wanting to know how much an elephant weighs. So. I mean, an uh, elephant female, like the one that's right in front of us, most likely weighs somewhere around three tons, maybe two or three tons. Whereas a big elephant bull can sometimes even get up to six tons. So, I mean, double the size of a female or the weight of a female. They say males will, will weigh six to eight tons, so it's a, it will vary depending on the size of an elephant, the area, the food available to them, and lots and lots of different things. But how spectacular is this, everybody? Amazing to have this elephant feeding. Yeah, while we spend a little bit more time here with this beautiful female elephant feeding right before our eyes, I'm going to send you over to Cedric to say hello. Well, as you can see, thanks Chad, as you can see we've got a beautiful leopardess, a female leopard track on top of all the vehicle tracks and must be for a Tlalumba from uh, this morning and I am going to try. Good afternoon to all the kids. Uh, yeah, my name is Cedric and behind the camera with me on Rusty we've got Muscles and Paul. So thanks for joining us and well we cannot wait to show you some amazing stuff. But this is a good start as you can see beautiful little the back pad so it's got the typical of the cat, it's got the three lobes, and then you can see her four toes. And this is during the daytime, not long ago. Uh, we just did the block now, and I did not see anything coming out on the other side. So I think what we're going to try and do, we are going to try and follow up on this leopardess very, very soon. All right, but with a cat track, one thing about a cat track. So cats, like lions and leopard, and a cheetah. So at the back, the back pad, it's got the three lobes. It's got the one, two, three. All right, just like that. See the three there? That's all your cats. But if you're looking at a dog, or if you're looking at a hyena, they got the two. They go one, two, like that, like a heart. All right, so that's the dogs and the hyenas. We'll only have the two lobes at the back, where cats will have the three at the back, as well as, then you can take a look here, back on this one. You can't really see now, unfortunately, the sun has disappeared. Uh, behind some of the clouds here. 
You can see no nail marks, no nail marks out there. Nathan, 12 years old, it's just by the size, it's very small, it's very small. Male, male leopards, much larger. Females, much smaller. Okay, all right. I think let's get going. Let's see if we can get any. I think she might be in this drainage line. So we might have to jump off the vehicle very soon and do some uh, footwork here. Just letting Tadiwe know, our director, that I might not be around. Uh, I've got a feeling that this leopardo is down here. So she went straight across. All right, let's just go engage there. Let's go in. Let's go and take a look if we are lucky. So leopards like this thick riverines, thick vegetation. It's their ideal kind of habitat. All right, let's slowly go down. Let's have a little look at some of these areas here. All right. Nothing you can see the self pool. Alright, so it's gonna go a, bit, a little bit further on. I'm just gonna see if she's not lying around here somewhere. She didn't, definitely didn't come out onto a road that's on top here. So she's in this uh, area. Might go a little bit forward, yeah. Don't see much of that side. Eh? All right, let's head over to Chad while he's got some elephants. Welcome back. Here we've caught up back with our herd of elephants they just moved a little bit away from where we were we waited for that female to move away from us and they seem like they're very happy feeding in this nice big open area there's a couple of nice thicker trees for them to feed on and each and every one of them will feed on their own preference It's just incredible to spend time with elephants. It's amazing to watch them and how they use that trunk of theirs. You have a look at the, the elephants now, how they're flapping their ears. So that's a way that these elephants will cool themselves down. There's lots and lots of veins in the backs of their ears. And when they flap their ears, that blood flowing through the veins will cool their whole body down. Okay, I'm just gonna reposition just a little bit. There seems to be a little bush that's in our way. So let me just reposition. And though you're asking why do they have so many wrinkles on in their skin um to be honest with you I, there's no specific reason that these elephants will have those wrinkles oh those two are pushing one another um there's no specific reason for them having those wrinkles and i couldn't tell you why they've got them you've stumped me with that question I will try to do a little bit of research, but I don't think there's a specific reason that they've got so many. Was it Nathan? Yeah. And Nathan, so elephants, they, they do have hair on their, their body. They, they don't have too much hair though. They're not covered in hair. You might be able to see some of the, the hair follicles or the hair on top of the head there. 
the panda, the cameraman, is doing a fantastic job here showing you the nice close-ups but they they've got quite a lot of hair on their trunks and that's just for when they're feeding and they're able to feel around on the ground what they're feeding on or what they're trying to pick up very very sensitive How cute is that baby little elephant there? Very, very small and you can see how he's trying to use his trunk. Not quite like mom, how she uses it. <laughs> Mimi is saying that you love their long lashes. There's a lot of people that are very jealous of the, the elephant's lashes. And that's also the they've got a, a reason for having those very long lashes and that's to protect their eyes when they are moving through thicker areas or feeding in thicker areas and protects them from thorns and branches and things like that being such a big animal they do move through dense areas I mean, they might go into a drainage line to look for very nutritious food to feed on or well, they might just move through a thicker area to get to another spot and those eyelashes will then protect their eyes from any thorns I think if they didn't have those eyelashes so there is a big bull that's approaching now these are two bulls Sorry, it's one bull at the back and this is a, a female, apologies. It seems like... Let's see what happens here. I'm just going to keep quiet while this is going on. So you can see how much bigger this elephant, the male, is on the left hand side. So apparently, the going back to the, the wrinkles, there, there is a reason for elephant wrinkles. Um, they don't shed their skin. So, I mean like a, for instance, a snake. And with this, the, the old skin um, and their cracks, it will often help trap the moisture, so keep the moisture in to their body. And it can often then help with them regulating their body temperature, so keeping them cool during the, the hotter parts of the, the day. So I can also only imagine then when they do throw water on themselves, that water then gets trapped within the wrinkles and it's a easy way to then cool themselves down Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app, accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
we're having a bit of a bumble here. We're starting in the June 1st and we're sort of on the outskirts of it. Very close to where the elephants were this morning. We've still got a little bit of more maneuvering and roads to get to get there. But we are more or less in the area where they might have been. So we, this is basically where we're going to start our looking for these magnificent creatures and it starts with looking on the floor look on the floor for all sorts of clues uh not just footprints but also a drop of plants they pull the destructive whenever they pull something off uh, from the side as they're walking along they will always drop like a few leaves uh, a, a few branches a few branches or anything like that so you'll find that uh, they leave a trail all over the place with them so that's what we're looking for but in the meantime we look at this well this is a milkwood and this milkwood is actually slowly starting to get its berries not very many all over but uh, the branch that you can see in frame has got the little green shoots on it and that is the beginning part of the fruit. Edible fruit. Edible indeed. It's like, um, what could we compare this to? It looks like a little blackberry, almost. Uh, what are those small? It's, a, it's smaller than a gooseberry. Much, much smaller. It's uh, like a blackberry, which is pretty cool. Iconic African mammals live large in humanity's imagination. Across the continent, fascinating mammals have evolved to fill every conceivable niche. Their struggles for survival, natural and anthropogenic, mirror those of wildlife the world over. Because they are so beguiling, Africa's mammals have become ambassadors for the Earth's remaining wilderness. I do apologize about uh, losing our signal, but yes, we've got Lalamba. <laughs> <clears throat> I am so excited we found the leopardess. I got her on foot as I walked into the drainage line and um, I felt that she was there because there was no tracks coming out and all of a sudden I bumped into her on foot and then of course Paul's like Cedric, Cedric and uh, yes we have found this beautiful leopardess known as Tlalamba. So she is one of our territorial females around here in Juma and she is a very well-known leopardess, Tlalamba. She's also getting quite hot. I think that's why she was in the drainage line there when I jumped off. I think she was just uh, just uh, lying next to a little puddle of water and it's nice and cool down there. But uh, I, mean, I did not know that she was practically right around the corner from where I was walking. She's still looking for me. <laughs> She's still looking for me. Annabelle, 11 years old. Yes, I'm glad that you're hoping for a leopard and well, bada bang, bada boom, boom, shakalaka. There it is. <laughs> I am so excited. My heart is pumping like thousand beats per second here at the moment. Because um, it's always a good thing when you do a little bit of footwork and you find that animal. And uh, yes, I'm glad that we could find out Lalamba. So she's pretty much uh, a fully grown female. Oh, she's turning around. She's pretty much a fully grown female. Um, she's already at six years old. So still young. Six years old is still very young. Um, her great-great-grandmother was a beautiful leopardess known as Safari. 
and uh, Safari uh, got up to 80, 90, sorry, 19 years old. 19, I, I was very fortunate to see actually the entire lineage. So I saw Safari, a great, great grandmother, or great grandmother. I saw her grandmother, and that is Karula, and then I saw her mom, Tandi, and now her. Oh, hey, my girl, you are just so beautiful, as always. I'm actually like shaking, that's how <laughs> excited I am. And I've seen thousands and thousands of leopards and you know every time you get to see one for myself I love it. Leah, 10 years old. Yes, they all have unique uh, spots indeed, Leah. Indeed. And uh, Tlalamba, this leopardess, she's very gold. She's very gold, like a, it's like a mom. So Tandi, her mom, was also very gold and a lot of, uh, she was very dark, like a lot of spots, very close, like uh, spots around the face area. So it made almost look like she had eyeliner and uh, like uh, dark makeup on. And uh, yes, so uh, very dark female. But then you get some of them that's much lighter. Some of the females much lighter. And uh, so, but definitely you'll find leopard spots. All of them are quite unique to each individual. Amazing. You can see she's just keeping her ears open. I think she's like, oh, Cedric, why did you go and ruin my afternoon nap? I'm sorry, girl, I do apologize. If I knew you were lying nicely tucked away there in the drainage line, I would have never walked in there. But uh, it's one way to find a leopard, eh? But look at that. Isn't it such a beautiful cat, those rosettes? Wow. Yeah, so she's coming on to, so yeah, she's six and a half years old. Six and a half. All right, uh, Paul, we're gonna see what we can do here. Let's do it. Yes. <laughs> I haven't seen, I haven't seen Tlalamba yet this, uh, this stint, so. I'm very excited to see her, because, uh, yeah, let's see if we can go, where is she going, there is she going, that side. We've got a refreshing splash of entertainment this March. Africam is surfacing with a new show. Join us every morning and submerge yourself in nature's ambiance. Watch it live and transport yourself to the finest watering holes across Africa. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
Okay, I'm just going to go up here and pour and then give it a little bit of a turn. Now come, you're going to get a beautiful walk by. So get ready with your fingers and get some nice uh, screenshots coming up. Some beautiful screenshots. So yeah, we go. Let's get a, a catwalk. There we go. Lollies. Isn't this beautiful? But yeah, so leopards as well, you'll find it because it's a solitary cat, so many times and they're territorial. They also, they, even during hot days, midday, could be 35, 40 degrees Celsius. Sometimes you see the leopards walking around, hunting, patrolling. But they do mostly at night time, but even during the daytime, they will also do the same. Right, Lalamba, you're heading straight towards a big clearing there, just south of our camp. So that's going to be her mission. But I'm trying to look at her belly because a lot of us are thinking maybe pregnant and all that, but it's very difficult. I mean, the last time she was copulating with a, a male was um, the 18th of January. So I think it was. Uh, I think it is a little bit too too soon to tell if she's pregnant or not. I think the belly, full belly may be more a little bit of food inside the belly um, because it's, yeah. But anyway, let's uh, let's turn around. <laughs> All right. Oh, she's going to cut in here. Maybe she'll go to, there's a tree this side. Maybe she'll go there. Man about 11 years old? No, they don't. Unless they're thinking, or concentrating. Oh, there we are. Just gonna watch her. Does he send marking against the tree? Anytime you'll see that tail like moving from back, uh, like side to side, like a very quick flick. And sometimes you'll see that when they're thinking and like concentrating on something they quickly. It's just like a gecko or in like a lizard. If you see a gecko lizard, lizard is uh, got its eyes fixed on a uh, prey. You see their tails like kind of flicking from side to side. And the uh, same as a leopard when they're concentrating on something, get the little flick. All right, let's move before we lose her. Boom, boom, boom. She's going to Gary Dam. Gary Dam. All right, let's get in here. Always make sure when you go off roading, always uh, make sure that you engage in too low range. All right, so, so in case you fall into a hole. All right, well, we're going to try and reposition and find uh, or keep up with uh, this beautiful leopardess. Let's head over to Eric. Watch this. So we're here at a nice point of elevation. We're looking for our sneeze width, but I can't find any. Uh, I don't think they sneeze with this, in this area as everything is looking green, green, green. There's different shades of green here. We've got light green, we've got dark green, we've got very cream green. And then we've got green grass green. Lots of shrubbery. And uh, it was this area not too far away from here now we are almost within stone's throw of where we saw our elephants this morning we found a lovely place that's out of the wind little kind of cove 
that has been surrounded by bushes. So it is actually quite nice. I don't have to hide my mic or anything. It's actually quite nice. We're sitting here. There's a big bush that's protecting us from the wind. A big bush on that side also protecting us. It's actually quite lovely in this little kind of area where there is no wind. Because the wind is, oh, I don't know if you could see the dust getting picked up there, but the wind is not good. Right. To the schools that have joined in with us on our safari, we thank you for joining us this afternoon. And uh, we hope that you have learned everything that you had wanted to learn, had asked all the questions you wanted to ask as well. We hope to see and hear from you very, very soon. And uh, when we do, well, let's hope you have some more brilliant questions to ask. My name is Cedric, and behind the camera with me on Rusty, we got to Muscles and Paul. Sorry, that was a little bit of a, uh, a surprise coming to us there. Um, all right, we are still with uh, Tlalamba, and she is still moving uh, through the block. She's still heading slowly uh, towards Gary Dam area. Still far. I think she'll be another good half an hour before she gets to Gary Dam. Isn't this beautiful? Of course, joining us on Drive on Wendy, we're going to have Chad and Opanda. And down in the Eastern Cape, Eric and Morgan in Amakala. And then our beautiful directing team this afternoon. It's going to be Dadiwa and Gwen. And our tech is the Toes. It lives live and ooh, she's seen something, that she heard something. You can just see all of a sudden a, a, she just kind of changed her body and listened to something moving around. There might be Franklin, might be a scrub air, might be something small, no, she's lost interest. This is live and interactive, so if you've got comments, questions, please send them through. We are here to answer as many questions as possible this afternoon. All right, uh, Paul, let's try and keep up with her, yeah? <laughs> All right, let's go three up. Watch the side. Watch the side. I'm just going to keep you a little bit back. I'm not going to go any close to let her have a bit of space. So if she does hear something, at least she can continue with that and we can sit back a little bit. Anna Marie here, yeah, thanks for joining us and it's so nice having uh, Tlalamba straight. Oh, I am so excited. I was like, we actually lost her for a, for a short period of time. We, we lost her um, because when I was on foot, um, Paul saw her pretty much jumping out in front of me and going up the bank. So we went around, we got back onto the vehicle, went around to see if I can uh, relocate on her and we couldn't find her. I'm like, oh, she's pulling, she's pretty much pulling off the, the Tandy slip. And uh, yeah, luckily we got to see her. But uh, you know, it's, about, it's it's unfortunate that, you know, I mean, I did not know she was lying there. It's like, you know, some, sometimes you do a bit of footwork, you think that you can see them from a distance, but in a drainage line, sometimes it's very, just so thick, and like you practically have to step on their tail before you notice that they are there. She is. Let me just go a bit forward. Sorry, I'm poor. Let's go a little bit forward, yeah. So don't want to lose her. Well, it's always great to see old Lamba. It's always great just to see the Queen of uh, Juma. 
And it's amazing how this lineage really kind of played out for so many years. And that's what's so fascinating. I love it. Oh, a little scratch. There we go. All right, copy. Yeah, we're still heading in a north easterly direction. We're actually heading towards Twin Dams Junction, Wilbur's e Wilburg Eagle uh, Road Junction, that side. Sorry, I'm just telling that guy. There's a gentleman that wants to join me, and I'm just trying to give him the exact uh, location. We're in the block again. But yeah, as I say, it's, it's so fascinating that uh, that's why we kind of we were thinking, but why do you name them? You know, why Clalumba? Why do you ask name them? The main big thing about naming leopards and lions and all that, at least we know who we see, and then you can, we can do a little bit of a better research on it and understand who's been here, who hasn't been here, how does it work, do they all just all disappear when they grow up? No, you know, that's a thing, no. All of a sudden, now we know what they do. So I think I'm gonna grab that side, huh? The golden light is coming. She must just go up in the marula tree. I think uh, I should give her a little bit more catnip. <laughs> um, like, uh, yeah, she's deep in her territory now. This is like deep in her territory. So uh, yeah, this is still part of her territory. No other females pretty much roam this area. Unless it's like in Sumi, a leopardess that uh, she hasn't she hasn't got a set area at, the, at this point in time. She's still young and um, she's like a nomadic female. So meaning that she'll just kind of venture out and, and you know, investigate new areas. That's Lalamba, this leopardess, this is her area. This is her territory, part of her territory. And remember, the leopards, female leopards' territories are quite large. Easy, maybe from seven, eight square kilometer. And then male's territory is pretty much almost uh, double the size of a female's territory. See, because the male's also double the size of a female. So a female like this can get up to 35, 40 kilograms. Her mom was very small, Tandi and her aunt uh, Shadow. They were very small leopardesses. Um, but yeah, they'll go up to about 40 kgs. A big male, easy, double the size, around about 75 to 80 kilograms. All right, let's uh, move on. Let's uh, move on. You're doing well then, Paul? Yeah. You're doing right then. Number one, yes. Just hold on. Sandy Franklin, the next, uh, the territory of uh, the, uh, the next uh, territory for, uh, for for a female a leopard, it depends on which way you're looking. I mean, the way we're going. Oh. Sorry, I just. Um, Kara to the north of us. If you go further to the east, we've got uh, uh, Waitika, and then you've got uh, Shudulu to the west. Look at that. Uh, Tadiwa, I just got to get onto the radio quite a bit now just to get guide these guys in. Please. So if you don't mind, I'm going to be quite a bit on the radio. Somewhere. Yeah. Alright, let's head over to Chad. I think she's somewhere, yeah. Good luck out there, Setters. And nice that he has been able to find Clalamba once again. And good afternoon to everybody watching. My name's Chad. On camera today we've got Panda and we are out and about doing what we do best looking for any animals. So 
We had a beautiful herd of elephants a little bit earlier on during the kids show. They started to head into some thickets and we then checked twin dams. There wasn't too much happening around there. So we've now changing it up completely. We're heading in the opposite direction to just go and see what we can find. We might go through some nice open areas. It would be quite nice to see a rhino. But uh, then anything else. I mean, I know there were some lions to our west in Elephant Plains this morning. You never know, maybe they have decided to come back to the promised land of Juma. But we'll just have to see. It is also quite nice. There's a, quite a lot of cloud cover this afternoon. So I was just chatting to Panda now. It's been a nice little break from the bright sunshine that we have been having over the last couple of days and it's a pretty cool temperature now. I mean it's actually quite pleasant especially when we're driving with a little breeze. It is very very nice. So it's actually the spot exactly where yesterday I found the ghost of Juma, Mulwati. He went off into the bushes and hid in the long grass but that was also very special to see Mulwati. amazing just drive areas and it already looks like the grass is starting to die and it's starting to turn quite yellow in color and uh, it looks like it's slowly but surely dying and it uh, apologies to everybody for the the picture breakup I'm sure it will be back to normal shortly but I was just saying that um, the grass is already dying and it shouldn't be this time it should be at its best right now just because we we should have had uh, much more rain than we have actually had but if this uh, cyclone that's apparently on its way towards our area does hit there's i think predicted about 20 or 25 mils of rain over the next two days so i mean we won't say no to the rain hopefully it's not too hard that it interrupts the the live drives but it'll be amazing to have some substantial rain. It's also just nice, nice to settle the dust and settle everything. I think a lot of the animals will also be happy. Pick up a little bit of water in the water holes around here to be able to make it through the winter time. Rally. So, I mean, with a cyclone, it's, it's often high winds, rain, there might be a storm, so like lightning, thunder, very dark, black or grey clouds that come in, and it often comes in from the east, so the east is behind us, we're driving in a westerly direction now, so it often will come from the Mozambican Channel, so between Mozambique excuse me, between Mozambique and Madagascar, so, like in that piece of ocean there, the, Madag uh, the Mozambican Channel, and then it will come over the eastern parts of South Africa, or Southern Africa, and I believe it is just meant to clip Kruger, so we'll just have to wait and see what, what does happen. Hopefully the eye of the storm, which is the middle of the cyclone, doesn't hit us. So that's often when the weather is quite bad compared to sort of all around it. Sorry, just try and re repeat that question. I got Miranda. What do animals do during the cyclone? Uh, uh, Miranda, you're wondering if the animals are safe during the cyclone. So, I mean, animals during a cyclone, they they would most likely be safe. They they will often go and hunker down somewhere. So. They might go into a, 
an area where it's very thick and the, the bushes can then break the, the rain, break the wind from them. So they then will spend time in thicker areas trying to get away from that. Um, but I mean, there have been cases of giraffes that have been struck by lightning before. So, I mean, being such a, a tall animal, there's a chance that it does get struck by lightning, but hopefully they do also then lie down. Um, but I don't think it's anything to worry about, to be dead honest with you. This is On Safari. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our Sunrise Safari. I was just saying now that there's a, a lot of marula trees in this area where we are and so I'm sure that's why there's quite a lot of elephant activity throughout this area and even if there's no marula fruit I really would love to bring back this they use their tusks and they dig into the Losing a uh, Chad. I think he just went into a little bit of a terrible signal spot. Um, but yeah, we are still here with uh, 
Plalumba, this leopardess. Uh, she's taking quite a snooze now. I think she must be quite tired. Uh, she's just uh, chosen out like a little bit of a dugout area where she's lying in at the moment, um, like a sandy spot, so nice and comfortable for her. And she's just still panting a little bit quick, and so maybe he's trying to digest some of the food that she had this morning. And this well, it's quite warm this afternoon. So there is another vehicle coming into the sighting now. So you're going to hear voices, and you will hear a vehicle that is going to be moving around in the back end. But how wonderful is this? Oh my girl. Uh, leopard and lover, I don't think they hide away. It's just a typical for any leopards, uh, male or female. You'll find male or female, they are very much the very elusive, secretive cats. So, you know, that's, and they're always in the, the drainage lines. They love that kind of habitat, you know, they like the thick areas. So, you know, they just want to stay out of view if they want to do that. And, uh, yeah, it's just uh, part of their, their makeup. You can see she is resting so nicely here. I was really hoping that she was going to go up into a, a big marula tree. It's usually like a lot of the marula trees have still got leaves on it and the canopy is still nice and thick, so nice shady areas. But a big thing for this afternoon, you can see the grass blowing around, or blowing from side to side, so there's quite a bit of a breeze this afternoon. GC, you say you wish you could have a little cat nap now with a furry blanket. Mm, that's uh, GC. Well, uh, don't have a cat nap. Don't have a, don't have a cat nap because you've got to keep your eyes open and to see what's going to play out here on uh, on our sunset safari. If you have a cat nap, then you're not going to see what's happening. But you can grab your furry blanket. I'm sure that is fine. And if you're going to carry a, or grab a furry blanket, then I guess it's quite cold wherever you are. Maybe, maybe a nice hot cup of uh, chocolate or a cup of uh, coffee, tea. Yeah, not the easiest of views at the moment, but it just shows you how well they blend in. Those rosettes, the coloration, especially now this time of the year where the, all, of, all of a sudden the grass is becoming this kind of a, a khaki, light brownish color, a cream color, and it just fits in with their coat. And it becomes quite tough <laughs> seeing them while they're walking through the grass. But it's all built perfectly just to go for a hunt and to surprise their prey. Stealthy hunters, that's one thing. A leopard, very stealthy. You always hear about the leopard crawl, and when a leopard needs to get closer to the prey, sometimes they go low and they almost do like a crawl, heading towards the prey and using all the cover they can. Her great grandmother, Safari, Safari was the, she was the, the master at using vehicles and vehicle noises as her cover. She was brilliant at that. We had to sometimes turn the vehicles off. If she was on a hunt, we had to turn the vehicles off because if we got turned that vehicle on, Safari would have used the vehicle's noise to muffle her own noise to get closer to the prey species. And as soon as you turn the vehicle off, she would go down flat. You turn the vehicle on, she'll get up and get closer. And turn the vehicle off, she goes flat. And Safari used to, she, she mastered that quite well and as well the vehicles itself. So if we were parked there, say, watching a leopard like this and there's impalas walking on the other side, she'll use the vehicles as cover. So Safari was quite a unique a leopardess. She was fantastic. Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot 
at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act. So welcome back everybody and we came to the western parts of Juma and to my surprise we found three wildebeest. You might be wondering why I say surprise, it's the first wildebeest that I've actually seen while I've been here on Juma. There's also quite a nice big herd of impalas that's in this open area. Nice just to see a variety coming to graze out in the open. And it's quite interesting these it's two males and then one female wildebeest and it's not often that you'll get that often what happens is you'll have one male and many females together and it doesn't look like the one male's much younger than the other one. Oh, they seem very relaxed with us that one's actually giving itself a dust bath so I was rolling around and often animals will do that. Often they'll roll around in the dust to try and get rid of any parasites that they might have. Sometimes you find a zebra is also doing that rolling around in the dust and sometimes people will see the zebras and they look a little bit reddish in color and some people might think that it might be a different type of zebra but some areas in game reserves have very very um, iron rich soils and with that iron rich soil it's very very red in color and so when that zebra rolls around in the dirt it then has this reddish brownish tinge to it if you've been following along on live at the waterhole you would have often seen elephants coming down to the water at Jamala and at Tau Lodge and they're very very red in color and that's what I'm talking about the beautiful male impala that's just walking now behind this wildebeest and they are all starting to slowly head down towards that big water hole that I was talking about a little bit earlier they might be heading down for their afternoon drink before that sun does start to set 
you might find that these impalas and wildebeest will go have a drink in the at that water and then come back to this nice big open area where they might then rest for the evening they just feel a lot safer Jerry, male wildebeest will fight um, for females. You can see those beautiful big horns. They'll often clash horns and then fight for dominancy or fight for, for females. And that's why I said it was a little bit interesting why what was happening here. As to why there's... Because this is the female now. That's just gotten up. And the two males are following one another. It's also strange that they're not staying with the female because often you'll find that if a uh, male wildebeest finds one female, he'll literally stick right close to her and try and keep her within that little harem so that when they do go into estrus or they're ready to mate, he'll then be able to mate with her and then start his own harem. It does seem like this female wildebeest is now following the males. One thing I would really, really, really love to see is uh, the Great Migration. When all those wildebeest move through the Maasai Mara into, when they follow the rains, I mean thousands and thousands and thousands of wildebeest moving together. It's definitely on my bucket list and maybe even to see the migration from a hot air balloon. I think that would be spectacular. Um, Miranda, it doesn't look to me like their, their hair is shedding. They, they do have this almost sheen to them. They, they don't shed their hair, uh, wildebeest. And they, they've got the, the shaggy hair underneath the, the chin, along the neck, and then also along their mane. And then the, the rest of their hair on their body is very, very short. Have a look what this wildebeest is doing. That's very interesting. You see how it's smelling the tree there. So often what you'll find is the way wildebeest will mark their territory is that they, they've got glands underneath their eyes, their pre-orbital glands. And they'll use that and they'll then rub up against trees in order to then mark their territory. Sometimes you'll even see them sometimes you'll even see them putting the um like grass into those glands to scent mark or little sticks to leave their scent behind. There you can see them now, all three joined up. It's quite amazing, you can see the size difference the two males on the right hand side and then the female that's now just joined on the left. Quite a big size difference between all of them. Well, definitely between the male and the female. Also another way to tell the difference between these the male and the females, the the male's got a very, very dark black face. Where the female's got a quite a brown forehead. As that male does get older, the, the darker that face gets. But quite amazing to see these wildebeest. First for me. I bless you, wondering how long um, these animals will sleep for. So 
I mean, they are diurnal, so they're active during the daytime and they sleep at night time. And they often will graze during the cooler parts of the day, so in the mornings and then in the afternoons. And I mean, they will sleep in the evenings. Often once that sun does start to set, they'll find a, a spot to, to rest, often out in the, the open. And I can imagine that they're not 100% sleeping though. So if I had to take a, a guess, probably around like six or seven hours in a night, they'll rest. And you'll find often that one will always be on the lookout. And you also find that, that they'll be together with other animals. So safety and numbers is a big thing out here in the bush. The more eyes, the more ears, the more noses, the better chance they have to spot any predators. Sandy Franklin, I would hope not. <laughs> um, so often what will happen is, I mean, the you would think that they might, but what often happens is, say for instance impalas, let's talk about impalas. So male impalas, when they are within a harem, all they're, they're doing is worrying about making sure that those females don't go anywhere, making sure that there's no other males that are trying to come and take over that harem. So he's not concentrating on feeding. He will feed, but not as much as, say, for instance, a bachelor herd. So if there's a bachelor herd of impalas, all they do is eat, drink, and sleep. They want to grow as big and strong as possible. And so that often, because they're doing that, they're getting stronger than the males that are within the harem. And then when they do come to um, fight that male that's been leading the harem. Often the male that's been leading the harem is a little bit more um, skinny and not as strong and so then they'll fight them and kick them out and then take over the harem. So just for genetic purposes and things like that the, the constant flow of males coming in and going out that sort of will then make sure that they don't mate with their siblings. Impalas seem to be just enjoying a little bit of shade. Also, these antelope, I mean, impalas and wildebeest, they don't have to constantly feed throughout the day. Also, something like a buffalo. They're able to ruminate or regurgitate their food. So they've got four chambers to their stomach and they're able to feed through the morning. And then when it gets quite hot, what they do is they'll often then rest. They'll find a shaded spot and they're then able to still get nutrients out of the food that they have been eating. They're just getting all the nutrients out of that food and then they'll swallow it again and it'll start that digestion process.
Thank you, Eric. It looks like we have all succeeded in our afternoon mission. I know that Eric was looking for the elephants. That was his plans for the afternoon. Uh, um, Chad was looking for elephants as well this afternoon and he found them. And I was on a mission to seek this uh, leopardess or Tlalamba and successful. Well, I wish it was like this every single day, but yeah, uh, not always. But it's nice just to still just sit here with this, uh, with this female leopard and uh, she's still taking a proper cat nap at the moment. I don't think she will lie for too much longer. You'll find that once the sun starts setting, starts becoming a bit cooler, I'm sure she's going to get up and she's going to head straight towards Gary Dam. And that's her mission. But she is way, way more relaxed in the way of her attitude-wise compared to her mom and her grandmother. So <laughs> if you if you remember, if you ever saw her mom, Tandi, or her grandmother, Karula, on uh, Wild Earth, and uh, I've, uh, I've had many, many encounters with them uh, when I was working at the lodges, and uh, yo, they could become feisty. Those two females, sometimes they could be relaxed, and you're following them, the next moment, out of nowhere, they will turn around and snarl at you, and like, oh, I oh, know, they... They were quite, they were <laughs> uh, quite the feisty girls. But uh, yeah, nice to, nice just to see old Lalambe completely different, completely opposite to uh, her mom and her grandmother. You'll find that Lalambe is just resting. She's very relaxed and uh, uh, relaxed in the grass here and not really bothered about anything. Ah, perfect. I'm just hoping that she gets up. Soon, sooner or later. I think she might have had a, quite a rough morning. Or not. No, no, sorry, which leopard? Sorry, Tadi, were you not uh, coming through clearly there? You said, how old, which leopard? What's the le leopard's name? Mother from Londolozi. Ah, uh, no, leopard lover, I can't, I cannot give, I don't, I don't even know there was a, a leopardess uh, known as mother. In the Yumpo? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, sorry, leopard lover, I can't, I can't uh, pff, that's, uh, if I say anything on that, I would, I'll be lying, so no. Unfortunately, I've never heard. Did I break up? No, she's saying no offense, but I doubt you pull it. No, it's fine. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> no offense. Sorry, that's just my comms broke up there. I had the same issue this morning. Sorry about that. I just want to try and reposition my radio. Maybe I get a better signal there. But yeah, no, it is just wonderful. And the one thing about a leopard, you know, that's why I love leopards so, so much. It's just the way they are, the way they kind of go about their daily thing. You know, sometimes, as I say, they are, you know, most of the time moving at nighttime. But daytime, oh, I've seen so many leopards. I've seen them patrolling. I'm just, I've seen them doing their thing. Sometimes the day is like 40 degrees Celsius, and here's this leopard coming down the road. Um... You know, so they had really kind of adapt to what the, uh, the situation at present. They'll adapt to it. If they feel that, look, I'm a little bit hungry, I need food, I'm not doing well, I'm losing body physique, um, you'll find that that leopard will be a little bit more active just to try and uh, get something. Even if it's a scrub air, even if it's a, a Franklin, you know, they're also very opportunistic for anything. And uh, talking about opportunistic and uh, like just like a great grandmother, uh, Safari, because I saw her Safari practically on her last, uh, you know, on her last days, and when she got to 19 years old, and I remember finding her around there at Safari, close to Safari Lodge, in one of the dongas there, 
and she was she was practically feeding on little skinks yeah you know like a lizard skinks and she caught one or two little skinks you can see the little scales of the skink and um so she when she started feeding on things like that why she lost body physique because teeth teeth is one of the most important thing once again for an animal as soon as your conacea shears in other words those modified molars are worn down flat there's nothing left and your canines are also like little, like uh, can I can say, little stumps. Um, you start struggling to really take down something and suffocate it, as well as opening up the prey. And uh, eventually, you know, you also you start uh, diverting onto onto smaller things. And that's exactly what Safari did. It was very sad seeing Safari disappear like that. But you know, that's. Uh, for a leopard to get to 19 years old, that is one of the best uh, stories I've ever heard. And she only had one eye. She was blind in one. I think she was. She had one eye for since she was, I think, 10 years old, 11 years old. I'm not too sure, but uh, she was pretty much uh, blind in the in the one eye. Mm. All right, so there's a town hall chat that's coming up. Please join uh, James and Andre at 7 p.m. on the 15th of March. So please, James and Andre at 7 p.m. on the 15th of March. They will discuss Wild Earth's developments, such as the donation drive and the new vehicles. Woo, yes, of, of course, Gert is busy grinding away there at camp on those new vehicles. They will also be talk, uh, taking questions from all the viewers and this will be open to all viewers. So everybody can join Andre and James at 7 p.m. on the 15th of March. Sorry, I have to jump onto the radio here. Uh, so you stand by, right, go. Can you your location please? Uh, just come up Wahlberg uh, Road, uh, Wahlberg Eagle Road. Just come up the road towards Tumbeta uh, House. You'll see where Pete came straight south. It's the one that goes from Tumbeta House uh, to Twin Dam. Sorry, I'm just live at the moment, but yeah, just come up the road. I will, um, I'll get your audio. Uh, in between the cars, then, that one that goes down there to uh, Gary Dam. Yeah, yeah, but uh, on Twin Dams, and then you turn left to go to Quarantine, and you go past Tumbeta House. You know that one. Yeah, I'll check out that too. What did Toddy say? Sorry about that everybody, just trying to guide this other gentleman into the sighting. Sorry Tadiwa, you go again with your question. Alright, let's go to Eric, as apparently he's got a better view on those beautiful elephants down in Amakala. So we've got a little bit closer, but these clever elephants unfortunately have put themselves in a place where there are no roads close by. And this is the closest that we can get to them. A little bit. It is one road that is fairly close to them, but by the time we get to that road, they would have moved f too far down for us to have seen them. So we're going to sit and wait for them here, for them to move down into an open field, which is probably... From where those guys are, about 400 meters. Now, 400 meters isn't very far, but uh, when an elephant is feeding, it can take awful, an awfully long time. So uh, <laughs> we're gonna sit and uh, be patient. They do seem to be moving somewhat. The wind is on their back, so it's. It's helping them, pushing them along. I've got three members over there. Looks like mom, baby, and first baby. Now the little babies 
to... I don't think they have names yet. I don't think they were given names. But... It will be gi given shortly. I'm just trying to figure out who those adults are. Because it looks like the mother of the baby, but... The mother of the baby looks very similar to a sibling. Candace, Amakala elephants are able to climb mountains, yes. Yes, they are able to climb mountains. But, uh, yeah, they are still the African, the African elephants capable of, of being mountain goats as well as travelers on the open fields. They thrive in all, well, they thrive in all the different biomes that we have here. The wind is not happy with us today. <laughs> not happy at all. That's fine. I can see the elephants don't look too unhappy about it. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our Sunrise Safari. Now, it's not all elephants that will have this. This is obviously an adaptation that uh, they require, obviously, being elephants that live in the desert. You know, in the desert, water is scarce. It's not everywhere. Um, so, yeah, it's a very, very cool adaptation that they have evolved to have. And uh, very important, you know, elephants will, will not survive. They can't have water. They're very water-dependent. 
another pretty cool adaptation that those elephants have that ours don't is much wider feet. Much wider feet. Same size legs, but much wider feet. And that's just for uh, surface area and traction in the sand. You need as much traction as you can possibly get when you're walking on sand. Our elephants are happy with the area that they live in. Perfectly fine. All right, looks like Lalamba is on the move now. Uh, she is heading now straight towards uh, one of the drainage lines. So we might lose her very shortly. Sorry, let's try. And... We're going to try and keep her as long as possible, as always, no matter what. We're just going to keep a little bit of distance. There's another vehicle here in the sighting, so we might have a, a, that vehicle pop up once or twice. But no, but we just want to see which way she's going. Yeah. And Paul, let's go around this side. Just hold on, eh? I'm not too sure about holes and logs here. So, of course, what we try and do, we try not to drive over the bushes. We try and put the bushes directly in the center of the vehicle. And why is that? And it pops up at the back. But there's some... Okay, there. And there's, uh, there's some uh, plants or tree species that we do not drive over. They are protected. There you go. You're allowed to drive over every species you want to. You're more than welcome. You're allowed to do it. Because you are beautiful. See, she's just listening out. She, what happened, she was lying down and all of a sudden she picked up her head and sniffed the air. And almost like she picked up an ascent of something, I'm not too sure of what. And that grabbed, that grabbed her attention. And now she's heading directly into that area. I don't know if it's maybe some kind of prey. No idea. And they have got a fantastic sense of smell, sense of hearing and a sense of sight, all very, very good compared to ours. She's hearing more things than we can even think of. Yeah, Kimberly, they'll still hunt even with a full belly. I've seen a leopard with two kills in a tree before. You can see how she's just sniffing out something maybe in here. As I say, always opportunistic as yeah, she goes in. And you'll find sometimes you'll get a daker, you'll get a steenbok that is lying somewhere in these thickest, uh, thick stuff. All right, she's gone now further away. All right, let's uh, leave her. We're, gonna just doing a, we're doing a wide berth around, wide. So I'm not going anywhere close to where she's looking to go. Right, she's coming straight out here now. Just hold on and pull you yeah, as a thick little sickle bush here. Yeah. Oh, I see I'm gonna get a flat wheel yet today. I already had a flat tire this morning. Um, sorry, Mpo. I'm gonna just try. There's a vehicle on the other side. I'm gonna just see if we can. She's heading straight to a marula tree. Please go up this marula tree in this golden light. It'll be fantastic. It'll be perfect for us. You can watch her. She's, see how she's zigzagging at the moment. She's seeing something. Watch her, watch her, watch her. She might pounce. She might pounce. She looks like she's seeing something. She might pounce on something. She's got her eyes set on something in front of her. And if it's a scrub here, it could be a Franklin. Could be anything. Oh, look, look, look. 
open up. He's decided to move again. Oh, there, 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 there she goes. She's got it. 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 Sorry about this, guys. Uh, uh, view discretion on whatever she caught there. Just view discretion. She just caught something. Yep. There you go. There you go. She just caught something here. A little scrubby. That's exactly. Uh, that's exactly. It's amazing the sense of the sense of hearing and how quick she was on that. That was amazing. So she's got the scrubby in her mouth at the moment. And well done. Uh, just shows you there. Opportunistic. Very opportunistic on that situation. Sorry, little scrubby. It is life, it is nature. Mandy, it was so quick, that just shows you how quick, and it's amazing that the sense of smell and the sense of hearing, and she's going to get up with it now, so just uh, please keep your eyes glued onto the screen, as I say, view discretion, if you are squeamish of uh, a dead animal, or an animal being eaten by a predator, maybe just go make yourself a cup of coffee. I apologize, there is a vehicle that's next to us at the moment. She might sit up with this little scrub here very shortly. There, there. Look at that. Look at that. Done. Overs, Godovers. As quick as that started. Cheetahs and other animals, you say it's your first leopard kill. Well, all right, let's see. Maybe she takes it up into the tree here. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> oh, I can't even, I'm missing the steering wheel here. Yeah. I'm so excited. Okay, you ready? Yeah. She might go up in the tree. Let's just see. Let's not go, just give her a bit of space here. Yeah. All right, she's just inside. So. She's ah, she's eating in the thick grass. She's eating in the thick grass. No, oh, well, let her eat in peace here. Yeah. Can you right there, Paul? It's going to be the best that we're going to get. Oh, there's enough there. You can just see her head there. There's her head. All right, we're just going to give her some space here. Let you eat in peace. Well done, girl. A scrub here for the win. But that's a, just a clearly a, 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 a prime, prime example, as I was talking about opportunistic. A prime example. Even if it's a scrubby, you think, why are you putting so much effort for a scrubby? Well, every little bit of meat is going gonna, is gonna to be something. <laughs> yeah, then the poly, I agree. Wrong place, wrong time for all scrubby. But that's that's how it goes. Now you can see her head bobbing up and down there. What she's doing now, she's just plucking the fur off. So they won't just they don't eat the fur. A leopard will pluck the fur off. It'll pluck, pluck, pluck until it's nice and clean. And she gets rid of all that fur and then she'll start feeding on it. But how quick was that in Paul? Yeah, fast. Yeah, that was quick, eh? Did you did you get it? I think so. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Uh. Oh, that was lightning quick. Ah oh, nice. So yeah, no, that, uh, I mean, uh, uh, leopards. When it, if a leopard charges at you, they, you know, they, they, their speed is around about uh, 25 meters per second. 25 meters per second. That's their charging speed. So it just shows you they're quick. But a leopard is a short burst.
They don't do that long sprints like a cheetah or like uh, wild dogs, even like a lion as well. A lion, they can sometimes just run after buffalo for a bit of, you know, a bit of distance, but a leopard doesn't want to run that distance. They want to do it quick, quick, sudden, done. <clears throat> All right, so we're watching a little bit of grass now. So yes, a little bit of blue seed grass that's in the mix here. Mostly the blue seed grass. Looks like it. Uh, we'll have to wait. Tadiwa, I don't think she's going to pop out anytime soon until she's maybe done with that scrubby. Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act. Taking me a sweet time to get down to the rest of the family. It's almost like they not wanting to go anywhere. Slowly, slowly feeding. little youngster at the bottom. Oh my goodness, did you see that little flick that that little youngster did? He's very unhappy. I was about to tell him, you're going the wrong way, you mustn't go that way, you must go up. Everybody's going up. You're gonna get very upset when they leave you behind. As the little youngsters do. I find it hilarious. They don't stick to the herd, they don't listen to the herd, and when the herd leaves them, they get very upset, start trumpeting all over the place, and they're like, well, yeah. You should have stayed with the, <laughs> should have stayed with the herd. And none of this would have happened. So 
So we just sitting here at Twin Dams, just enjoying the beautiful scenery. It's been a fantastic sunset safari so far. And Eric was able to catch up with those elephants to see Tlalamba again and to have her make a small little kill and scrub here. I'm sure Cedric is ecstatic and over the moon with that. And how beautiful is this scene? We're just sitting here at the waterhole, just turn it all in. And I know a lot of the viewers did really enjoy the, the silent segment. So I'm going to take the next minute or two and just enjoy the scenery here. How oh, beautiful, just to take a moment just to appreciate everything that's been happening on this magnificent Monday. And just a reminder to all the viewers, there's a town hall happening. You can join James and Andra at 7 p.m. Um, on the 15th of March. And they'll be having a, they'll be discussing the wild earth developments such as the donation drive and the new vehicles and they'll also be taking any questions that will be interactive and it will be open to all the viewers so please don't forget on the 15th of march to join james and andre in the town hall not to be missed by anybody panda i don't know if you can see that oh Never mind. As soon as I <laughs> sorry, as soon as I, I pointed, I just saw a kingfisher land, and then the kingfisher flew off. But it wasn't a woodlands kingfisher. It was just sitting on the the edge of the the water, and literally as soon as I pointed at it, it moved away. And I'll keep an eye out. Maybe it will come back. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Don, it's only my pleasure. I'm glad you, you really appreciate that silent moment. I mean, today has been quite action-packed from this morning sun, sunrise safari to the afternoon sunset safari. And it is a, a nice moment to just appreciate everything in life. I mean, you can just sit back, relax, and listen to the sounds of nature. And as nice as it is for everybody sitting at home to hear the naturalist voice and get all that knowledge it's equally as nice to just appreciate what we have
Sandy Franklin, so since I've been on Juma, I haven't been able to see the black dam males. And I have, though, before seen the, the black dam males. They actually hold the territory also from, I mean, Juma and north of Juma, as well as further south into the northern parts of Mala Mala. So when I was working there as a, a ranger last year, I did indeed get to see them, but it would be so nice to be able to catch up with them and see how they're doing. Now, I watched the black dam males also catch a buffalo, um, not too far from the, the boundary, which will also be a, a buffalo kill that will stick with me for a very long time. And I do believe that there were tracks of them not far from our, our property this morning. So maybe tonight they'll come on to Juma and hopefully they do then stick around and I'm able to find them for everybody, myself or Cedric, able to find them tomorrow to catch up and see how they do after that little encounter they had with the Nzenga males down on Mark. So as myself and Panda just sit here at Twin Dams and enjoy the peaceful moments, we're going to send you back over to Sedas to see what's happening with Tlalamba. Thanks, uh, Chad. Yes, uh, still here with uh, Tlalamba, this beautiful leopardess, as she's still busy munching away on her scrub hair meal. She just caught a scrub hair a few moments ago and uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, I can't see, my, I don't know what she's doing there. <laughs> I'm sure she's almost, what is she doing there? Looks like she might still be plucking away at that fur. Yeah. A very strange noise that, and sometimes you can just hear that plucking, plucking noise. I think so. oh, she might be almost done. I don't hear any crunching anymore. Well, a little scrub air like that is not going to go a long way. Um, she'll grab that little scrub air and she'll move off again and she'll you know, see what else she can find around the area. She bumps into another scrub bear or in Franklin or even in Palo or something, yeah, no, she's going to take that opportunity once again. Just making sure that that tummy has got something inside of it. But yeah, thank you little scrub bear for giving your life away for the Queen of uh, Juma. It would have been quite interesting to see if a hyena had to make its way into this uh, area. That, uh, if the hyena has to come here now, well, she might even take whatever le is left of that kill up into this marula tree that's right next to her. <laughs> Apache, a scrubby is like, oh, there you go. She might take it up into a tree. Ooh. 
look up into the tree? No? I'm not going to look up? There's still quite a bit left there. Come on, climb the tree. Oh, she's just repositioning herself. It's like a rabbit, but a scrub hair, of course, uh, is, is a big difference when uh, it comes to birth. Uh, we'll find that a, a scrub hair is precocial, precocial meaning it is born with fur and its eyes are open, the little ones, the babies, and a rabbit's the little babies is ultracial. Ultracial means it's um, little babies is born still pink, like little pinkies, as well as eyes are closed. So we don't get rabbits here, we just get the hairs, the scrub hair. Oh, I thought she was going to go up into this tree. That would have been nice if she decided that. If you are a driven nature enthusiast with a background in communications, then this message is for you. Wild Earth is calling for volunteers to moderate our web and social media chat platforms during our live broadcasts. Do you keep up with the latest trends on social media? Do you have quick fingers and a sharp eye? Then we're looking for you. To apply, email your CV to us at jobs at wildearth.tv. Join the Wild Earth team today. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. I'm going to try to go around and pull. Yeah. Let's just try. Let's just try. Okay, we're just going to try and reposition here quickly. Just going to just go to the other side. Let's see if we're going to get a bit of a more of an open spot here.
but we left our elephants. And we're here now with three of Africa's largest female antelopes, or just the largest antelopes in Africa in general, the Eland. Beautiful, three beautiful ladies, fairly oldish ladies, that one especially giving us that look. She's a, she is a decent age, I'd say. She's still got it. Oh, look at that. How clever is that? Using her horns to scratch past that she won't be able to get a hoof to or she won't be able to get a tongue or teeth. Can be difficult sometimes. And I, the reason why I say that she's a little bit old is that she's... If I look, you can see there's bits of fur that's missing on her shoulder. Um... You know, her fur looks a little bit rough. She's covered in ticks, goodness gracious. She's got cities living underneath her legs there. Ticks. And this is fairly, fairly common for animals that live out here. You're naturally going to be covered in ticks. There's no way around it. And, uh, well... I suppose there is a way around it. Those little birds have just landed on her. Those will be her, her saviour. Those are the red-billed oxpeckers. The red-billed oxpeckers do a number of good things. You know, They pull all the parasites off the body. However, they also do a little bit of bad every now and then. If you have a scar, not a scar, if you have a wound, they really love the taste of blood um, and will not hesitate to pull a scab off just so they can get a little bit of blood flowing out of the scab. Quite naughty birds, actually. And you find they're actually going to nest in the houses of roofs, of, of lodges. Dark man lover, indeed, with the light, the dark, the dark clouds in the background, it really does look amazing. Absolutely amazing. But uh, like I was saying, the red-billed oxpeckers make uh, their nests in the roofs of thatch, thatch houses or thatch lodges um, often. Otherwise, they will use the, the leftover nests uh, stolen from uh, red, sorry, black collared barbets. Or just any bird that burrows into uh, into the trunk of a tree. That's where you'll find them making nests. It's not a not a strange thing that there's only three of them here. I would say so, Brian. Definitely. Um, yeah, they outweigh most antelope. Um, I think something that they had, they they might have a bit of competition with is in a uh, book in the antelope in the antelope section. But other than that, they they will definitely be the strongest. Um, obviously, weighing in the heaviest. So the females start off at you know fully grown females start off at about four four hundred and fifty kgs. You know, and they extend all the way up to just under 750 kgs. Yeah, the males start at about 600, 500, 600, and extend to sometimes just over a ton, depending on how good the genes are. Um, so, yeah, these guys get scary big. Um, and obviously those big bulls, they have the biggest fights, those things. Oh, my goodness. They have this flat kind of flat, fluffy bit. You see where her ears are? And between her ears, below her horns, above her eyes, the males will have these fluffy, fluffy kind of uh, uh, platforms, in a sense, which uh, it looks almost like a platform, very much like a hairdo as well. And uh, that's where they connect each other when they are fighting. And my goodness, Ireland fighting can be sometimes scary to watch. You know, they really push each other around. It's like watching buffalo fight.
they do have very very fine hairs well not f i wouldn't say they're fine they're fairly hard um fairly coarse hairs on their skin uh danny and um yeah, that skin basically is very similar to other antelope. You know, most antelope will have the same sort of same sort of thickness, same sort of texture, uh, feeling for skin, except for waterbuck that will have a slightly thicker coat. You know, impala and springbuck might have slightly thinner coats because, you know, they're a little bit smaller. Um, I know springbuck is fairly soft-ish. I've felt earland before and it's not all soft. Oh my goodness, I've been distracted by a little bird. There's a little stone chat on one of the bushes here. But we're talking about these eland here. Now, I haven't seen other eland in this area. It's not unusual that there's only three here. It's possible that there's some on the other side of the slope that we can't see. Um, but generally, you'll normally find eland in a herd. Mm, and numbers ranging from about six, six or seven, all the way to about sometimes even thirty. Right, we're gonna send you over to Chad, I believe, who's still got his leopard with him. Beautiful silhouette of uh, Tlalamba. Look at that. Look at that silhouette. Isn't that stunning? <laughs> that is picture perfect. A silhouette, silhouette of a Tlalamba up in a marula tree. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Hey, Paul? Ayoba, man. Ayoba, man. Yeah. This is Amazing Zing. <sighs> This makes me happy. And what are you doing with the As you can busy cleaning herself, so she's just finished off her scrub hair meal for the afternoon. I'm doing a little bit of grooming and cleaning. Oh, look at that. My goodness, I've got a... I'm taking photos with my eyeballs here at the moment. Click, click, click all the time because this is just a, something amazing. Wow. Lynn, yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, well, that's why I'm doing this, because I love, love nature. It's just so amazing. And it, to bring this kind of sighting to everybody at home or wherever you're watching, and I mean, this is live and interactive, and uh, to bring this to everybody, uh, it's, it, it warms my heart up, you know, it warms my belly and uh, yeah, this is just perfect for the afternoon. Yeah, I just come a little bit further uh, down. Um, you're not too far, just come about 50 meters down and come then south into the block. Jelly bees should be the thumbnail of the safari. Oh yes, this, oh look at that. Eely. All right, she's in a, in a terrible position now. She might go and lie down. Yeah, she's just gone for Zulu and Senior now. I've got you. This just, so we're just gonna quickly reposition here while the other vehicle's coming in. And there we go. There you go. Right like that and pull. So this is a typical like pose for a leopard. When you think about a leopard in a, you know, going up in a tree, typical like this. Got a beautiful branch that's coming out horizontal, and um, a nice marula tree. And uh, now she's got a nice vantage point, nice little breeze up there as well. And now she can clean herself without being pestered by any hyenas and that. So perfect little spot for her. Uh, 
Amazing. Oh, she has really shown off uh, this afternoon. A bumble girl, yeah, I know. I don't, I don't, I don't actually, I don't mind sitting with leopards any time, but it just shows you. I'll feel sometimes a leopard could be lying like earlier, flat in the grass. You think, oh, nothing's going to happen. All of a sudden, she picked up on the scent of something. She heard something. She got up. She went. She made a kill, and you know, from being a sleepy cat to having a meal and on top of that now climbing a tree so I always say let the let the sightings play out very important let the let the sightings play out hey my girl oh you're so so beautiful and she's looking a lot like a mom she's got a lot of a mom in it her eyes almost like if you look at Kuchava as well so Tandy's offspring Tandi or Kuchava is of course uh, Tandi's daughter and Klalamba is also Tandi's daughter and this just looks a lot, also a lot of Karula in here but I think Kuchava has got more Karula, the grandmother's, grandmother's uh, looks. Once again, those are very those typical short snouts. Better is more than a word to us. It's a commitment to conserve our nation's precious landscapes, oceans, and wildlife. It's more sustainable fishing and farming practices, jobs and prosperity for our communities, and access to clean drinking water for all. Better is believing that together we can make a difference. For nature and for you. All right, still here with old Klalamba. She's still just lying up here in this marula tree, just watching the area, just taking a look what's happening around her. She's got the perfect place, perfect spot for for that. And she's leaning against the branch, so you can see the branch on the side of her face. So she's going to be using that branch as a pillow at the moment. 
Doesn't look too comfortable. I think she needs to flop her head to the right. But you can see the blood on the side of her face as well from that scrub here. A little bit there on the side. She's keeping her ears and eyes open. There's so much um, wind at the moment here. Yeah. You can see that this cyclone is slowly but surely coming in. It is going to hit us tomorrow, midday tomorrow. And uh, I wonder if she knows anything about it. I wonder if she feels that there, there is going to be a change in in weather for the next two days. There's so much rustling of the leaves, all the dry leaves and the grass. So I think there's so many noises happening around here. I think that's why she keeps on looking back and forth and to see if anything is making its way this side. Hmm, let's see if she lies against that branch. Hey, my girl. Oh, did she just wink there? I think she she just winked, huh? Yeah. yeah. Panting away. Look at that little tongue of hers. <laughs> Almost reminds me of Marips. Uh, Half-brother. Marips has got the same... But he does it all the time. His tongue will come out a little bit further than that. That's a young male leopard. If you don't know his marips. And uh, when he walks and when he pants and when he looks at you like that, his tongue is always sticking out. Oh, look at that. Time for a little bit of a, a late afternoon snooze. Nothing wrong with that. Katie Cat, you say it looks like a lot like Tingi, uh, Tingana. Of course, Tingana is uh, Lulamba's father. And uh, I think Tingana's also got a bit of Tingana in there. It's difficult to, you know, like I've seen Tingana thousands of times as well when I used to work at Arethusa. And well, I haven't seen him for like life for pff, almost four, four years. Four years now, five years, five years. So it'll be difficult. I'm trying to bring back some of his, you know, just um, how can I can say, like some some memory back there. You know, I'm just trying to get some pictures back there. Yeah, like you know, the, the thought of Tingana, just getting that head and that face into my into my head. But yeah, a lot of Tingana. Maybe a little bit of, uh, as I said, I, I feel that she's got a lot of Tandi in her, her mom. I actually like to compare with Kachava and Klalamba together. You know, just like a side-on-side -side profile. They're quite interesting. All right, well, we're going to sit a little bit longer here with uh, sleepy Klalamba. I think let's head over to Eric down there in Amakala as he's doing some birding. This is a secretary bird. Trying to sit perched up on that bush, on the tree, but it's very windy. Very, very windy indeed. But this is the one that we saw not too long ago when we were, while we had our elephants. Was it the elephants? Yes, it was the elephants gate crashed this party. I think what she or he, he or she is trying to do is just flatten the the sticks and bits of the branch just nicely so that they can sit down there. Perch, not perch, lie down. Doesn't necessary look the comfortablest as you can see the tail feathers sticking sticking out it does look content over there the secretary bird oh. now they'll make nests on the top of trees and bushes and big shrubs 
um, at the very, very top of the tree. They won't like have their nest concealed like a like a, a sunbird or a mouse bird where the nest will be within the tree. No, no, this nest is on top, like an angel on top of the Christmas tree. And they are usually large. Well, I mean, the, the size of the bird is big. It's a massive bird. Uh, not quite comfortable yet. There's some more stomping. does take some form of balance. Just remember that tree does look a little bit flimsy. Gene, yes, we've been trying to get this specific secretary bird on, but uh, when we came here this morning, he or she flew away very quickly. Uh, you could see that they were just getting ready for the morning. They had done their morning stretches, done their Pilates, now ready to go and start catching some snakes and some mice. And uh, as we pulled up to the little spot here that we were sitting at, it took off. I wonder where the other one is, because there's usually two here. We saw this one quite close to the road. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries, showcasing incredible animal behavior, for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app, accessible on both Apple and Android platforms. Otherwise, you could starve. Yeah, this wind, I thought we, well, I thought it was going to drop or calm down a little bit. So, <laughs> it does, it does look a little bit like the FNB tree. I'm pretty sure the FMB tree is supposed to be a sweet thorn in the savannah with the sun behind it. 
Uh, the sun is sort of behind this tree, but not in the way that we want it to be behind this tree. Um, the sun is also about to be covered by some clouds. And there goes our golden hour. Bye. We will see you tomorrow. Very, very cool. I wish I'd watched this bird jump up there because we it was on the floor when we first saw it. It walked quite a bit, probably about two to 300 meters, and then jumped up. I would have loved to have seen it jump and fly up to that, that perch. It's just watching the tail blowing in the wind. Look at that. Oh, and so, so creative. I think, and Paul, that's one thing Paul's got. The creativity on his side is I'm a zing zing. Look at that. Beautiful. Coming up to her back right paw and back right leg. Draped over this horizontal marula branch. And she is fast asleep. Fast asleep now. Very content with her life. Content with her day's success. Diane, yes, from the UK. Diane, yes, she does look very feminine. Typical with uh, a leopardess. They, they are females. Uh, they're very feminine, tit, and uh, beautiful. If it was a male, you'll find much larger head, thicker neck, big shoulders. I mean, twice the size of a female. But look at her. Oh, she's so gorgeous. I just feel like this grabbing those little cheeks, hey? What do you, you know, no, Paul, I won't do it, of course, but <laughs> I must have been creative like you now. <laughs> but it's just so cute. <laughs> oh, but she's beautiful, eh? So I don't think she'll rest up here, of course, the whole night. She'll come down a little bit later on. In general direction is going to head towards Gowrie Dam, so I'm sure she's going to go for a, a drink later on around the dam area. So make sure that you tune in to our Juma Dam Cam. You might see the queen of Juma making her way that side. Bradley, uh, it's amazing. That's uh, the, the agility of a leopard is fantastic. Really, it's phenomenal. Uh, since they were, from when they were little cubs, they start practicing to climb small trees and getting right to the top of the branches, staying out of any, you know, any, any danger. Maybe a hyena coming around, maybe another male leopard, you know, and these little ones will go right to the top. I've seen it with, uh, I remember with Shadow's cubs, the Arnarathusa, and I can't remember what approached. I think it was another male leopard. Uh, it was I, you know, I can't remember, but the little cubs of shadow went right to the top of the little tambuerti trees, like right to the top. So even if it was another, but it won't, they won't be able to really climb to that point because they're too heavy. They'll just, you know, bend it over and they'll just fall, fall to the ground. But the little cubs are still so light that they can climb to the top. So as soon as the cubs they climb, and now. I mean, she's six and a half years old. So for her to climb up a tree now, it's it's like it's it's second nature. It's it's so easy. And they are the masters of the trees. Jilly B, it has. It's been a remarkable Monday. It's been fantastic. I mean, Chad had a uh, llama this morning, and uh, of course, this afternoon, 
little lumber came out once again, almost practically stood on top of her, a little bit of uh, tracking, and luckily we relocated on her, as well as a nice secretary bird down there in Amakala, that's wonderful for Eric. So yes, this afternoon has been spectacular. A great way to start the week, great way. and been spoiled by this leopardess. As I can sit with a leopard all day long. Uh, it'll never ever get bored. It'll never make me tired. I don't think till the day I end up in the in the ground, I think I will be enjoying these sightings day in day and out. Day out. <laughs> hey, Clalamba. Ah, tomorrow she's got beautiful eyes. Those eyes of hers are just so mesmerizing. You look into those eyes. Big eyes. Look at that. She's just keeping her eyes open. Oh, and she's like, okay, there's nothing around here to look out for. So I'm going to go and have a, a snooze while I can. I've got the little scrub here in my tummy. It's perfect. Oh well, it's so sad that we are coming now to the end of the show. I wish we could just be here for the entire night. But anyway, it's just one of those things. But yes, please make sure that you do join us tomorrow morning. Cannot wait for our sunrise safari at 6 a.m. Central African time. Make sure you put that alarm on. As well, thanks so much for all the comments and all the questions that you have sent through to us uh, this afternoon. It was wonderful spending time with this beautiful leopardess. But yes, we shall catch you tomorrow morning. Bright eyed and fluffy tailed. Yes, from Paul, from Tlalamba, and the Wild Earth crew, and myself. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful evening further. Good night.